Come on a journey to discover one of the most dangerous ants in the world. A colony thriving with hungry larvae. Let's see how they hunt and feed. The Mimesia piriformis bull ant, also known as Inchman, is a species native to Australia. This species is known for its extremely aggressive behaviour, large size and potent sting. They are primarily found in open forests and woodlands across Australia, particularly in the eastern regions. They build their nests in soil, often under rocks or logs. This type of bull ant is actually one of the most dangerous ants in the world. They are known for its venomous sting, which is potent and can cause severe reactions which can result in hospitalisation. We'll watch later how their sting incapacitates a cricket. However, if I place any random object into their nest like this water feeder, watch them attack it immediately. The queen is about 25 millimetres in length. She has a robust body with a distinctive head and large mandibles. Her colour is similar to the workers, usually ranging from reddish brown to black. This lady's role, like all queen ants, is to reproduce and establish the colony. She participates in early colony activities like foraging until the colony grows larger and workers can take over these tasks. So let's have a look at my colony. I have about 50 workers scattered over three nests. Nest one, nest two, and nest three. The most incredible thing about these nests is the way the workers segregate and organise their brood depending on how advanced it is. You have the eggs all the way over here by themselves in nest three. This is where the queen spends most of her time. These workers are assigned to only caring for the eggs. They regularly clean the eggs to prevent infections and protect the eggs from potential threats within the colony. Also, these eggs are more susceptible to disease. By segregating them from the older pupae and cocoons, which might produce more waste, the colony reduces the risk of disease spread among the most vulnerable stages. Different stages of the brood have distinct nutritional needs. The larvae scattered through nests one and two require regular feeding. There are very small larvae and also large ones almost ready to cocoon. See how they scale up in size inside the nest? This really shows how smart this species are. By grouping them, the workers can optimise the distribution of food and care, ensuring the different size larvae receive the nutrients they need. We'll look at the feeding in more detail later when we give them some crickets. But just look at this larvae development and how active they are. The larvae need intensive care, so workers groom them to keep them clean and free from parasites or fungal infections. Workers may also move the larvae around the nest to maintain ideal temperature and humidity levels. You can see the workers here cleaning some of the smaller larvae. They are really frantic and fast in their movements and it is obviously a very important job for them. Lastly, we have the pupae or a cocoon stage. The larvae spin their own silk cocoons, which serve as protective coverings during their pupal stage. The workers here are assisting the pupae to make their cocoons. The workers ensure that the cocoons are kept safe and will also move them around the nest to find the most suitable temperature conditions. Sometimes this species take their larvae into the outworld for long periods of time. As it is only one or two larvae, these particular larvae probably have health issues. Ants are highly hygienic and when larvae is suspected of being unwell or infected, they may isolate it from the rest of the brood to prevent the spread of disease. This could also mean the larvae are being rejected due to defects or underdevelopment. We certainly see this happening here with this obviously unwell larvae. Look at the colour of it. It's getting dumped in the outworld to maintain the overall health of the colony. They copy the same behaviour with cocoons as well. These ones are getting taken out of the nest and placed in the outworld. By appearance, they look okay, but I guess these workers have identified a problem with them. 
This worker is a queen attendant. She grooms and preens the queen, ensuring her cleanliness and health. This care directly impacts her reproductive success and her ability to continue to lay eggs. Something strange is going on with these two workers. One of them is holding the other in a vice grip, and no matter what the other one does, it cannot get away. I think this could be happening either because one ant needs to assert dominance over the other as part of their hierarchical worker system. Or sometimes ants will attack a member of the colony that is injured or sick. This could be a defensive mechanism to protect the colony from disease spread. Anyway, whatever the reason, I do feel a bit sorry for this poor worker. The attacker has now changed its grip, so it has now got a firm hold on the victim's gaster. It's using all its energy to try and get away, but with no luck. Now it seems to be exhausted and has given up. So let's put some crickets into the outworld and give them some food. Bull ants have excellent vision, so they can spot these insects straight away. However, they can also detect the cricket's motion. So it does not take them long to subdue the cricket and overpower it with their strong mandibles. Watch as the sting of this worker goes into the cricket. Once it's subdued, the workers will transport it back to the nest to give to the larvae. Here's one carrying a cricket leg. Unlike adult ants, the larvae of bull ants can digest solid protein, such as the soft tissues of the cricket. The workers often cut the cricket into smaller pieces before presenting it to the larvae. These hungry larvae will break down the proteins and regurgitate it to share with the rest of the colony. This provides vital nutrients for the colony's growth and maintenance. With this process, we again see the division of labour in the ant colony, where larvae are the main processors of protein food sources. So let's have a closer look at these workers. They are slightly smaller than the queen with a really muscular appearance. Unlike some other ants, Mimesia ants are not highly social. Their colonies are smaller and they do not exhibit the same level of cooperative behaviour seen in other species. So the workers are solitary foragers, unlike many ant species that forage in groups. They are known for their excellent vision, allowing them to hunt for prey very efficiently. They primarily hunt insects, but will scavenge all sorts of food. They are feeding on some sugar water here. I drip it onto a cotton ball because they will just cover a water feeder in soil. I found this the most effective way to feed them sugars. Thanks for joining me to check out my giant bull ant colony. Don't forget to like, subscribe and hit the bell icon for more ant keeping adventures and tips. Until next time, happy ant keeping.